Good morning, Vikings fans. Or should I say, good afternoon, Vikings fans. This is Morning Joe's. Brought to you by uh, TicketClub.com. If you're looking for tickets for this Sunday's game against the Seahawks, Check out, uh, well, actually, check out Purple PTSD and VikingsTerritory.com. There will be an article up by the time you listen to this about a deal we're running with Ticket Club, which is essentially giving you a, a year of, of their premium membership, which is basically just tickets uh, for any event, concerts, games, even plays, uh, with no fees. So if you're sick of paying 20% fees on your tickets, uh, you get a free membership uh, through us. So uh, check that out. The Discount code is Skol PTSD, so S K O L P T S D. Uh, but yeah, I am Joe Johnson, owner and operator of PurplePTSD.com, VikingsTerritory.com, and PurpleTerritoryRadio.com. Here, as always, with Mr. Joe Oberly. Yo. What's yo, happening? Yo yo yo. Ooh, did, did you join a gang? <laughs> they got you. They've been lo- lobbying you for. I'm for practicing. Years. I'm, I'm practicing. <laughs> um, well, Purple PTSD is kind of a gang. It's just a, yeah. a low self esteem gang. Um, I, I don't feel real good about that. Yeah, well, that's you low, low self esteem. Yeah, you, that, you, that, that's that's how I know you fit. Um, yeah. but we actually have some uh, Vikings football to talk about uh game time action M- really one drive uh from the starters on offense anyway um but it was a a good game you know are we are we talking about super bowl already after that drive yeah that- i mean i got <laughs> you know how i get I, yes. I i really have delved more into uh like Twitter, Vikings Twitter, with my own account as opposed to just hiding behind Vikings Territory or Purple PTSD's accounts. And it was really hard for me to say, not say, rather, oh, look what Cousins can do with a little bit of time. And he's mobile. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I tried to temper expectations. Preseason. I'll, That's I'll what go. I'm here for, Joe. I'll, I'll temper your expectations for you. It was great. It was great to see that drive, and it was great to see the efficiency and – and uh, it was nice to get uh, uh, McAllister's first touchdown as a pro out of the way so he can get yeah. many, many more. And it was all good. It was all good. But it was uh, it was uh, a team that didn't put out their first-string quarterback, so you wonder how much their defense really cared. So you know, Yeah, uh, I, I've seen a lot of uh, – one of the funner things I like to do leading up to a game or, or after the game is to look at like what version of purple PTSD they have in Vikings territory in different markets. Um, not necessarily like a fan sided or national site that has local entities, but more just local legitimate or genuine. Uh, I don't want to say the, the term <coughs> fan site since that uh, has a negative connotation apparently. Um, but a lot, a lot of people in uh, the Bayou were really unhappy with the performance of the, Saints defense especially so I think that was I mean everyone kind of overreacts to the first game but I think that you know in looking at what the first uh, the first team offense did you know it could have been a lot worse uh, I wrote an article about it and, and Cousins' thoughts on it which we'll touch on in a minute but you know he basically summed it up it could have been a three and out and we would have been done for the night so for, to see that to see them overcome that early penalty um was encouraging the just the diversity of plays all of it i was really happy with it but we'll get into that in a minute uh because there is some news that i thought we should cover obviously <coughs> the the trade that they made sunday night is is the big talker um i, I and you and i haven't really talked about it um yeah. online so i was interested in your take on it uh, for people that don't know, which I assume everyone does, if they're listening to our show, they uh, Vikings traded a 2020 20 fifth round pick for Kari Vedvik, a Norwegian wonderkind uh, that it would be the if he ends up being the punter and the kicker, uh, which I don't see happening, would be the first a person to do that since the Rams. Frank Coral in 1981 was the last time someone uh, did both. 
Um, but what, what was your take on that? Who do you think that means more <coughs> to in regards to competition? So, so what, is that, what does that tell you about a team that the biggest story coming out of camp this year has been this... Uh, <laughs> Kicking wolves? The, the special teams, yes. it's uh, It actually tells you a lot that the special teams still aren't fixed under the Zimmer regime. There's, there's still a work in progress. There's still... Um, tinkering there uh someone's dissatisfied that you know granted it hasn't been great but you know at some point and you and i have talked about this you have to get these guys who you're going to have working together and 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 go into a season with them and this this is is makes the person a little nervous you said earlier uh you know he could he could be both kicker and punter and uh it, it, and it, uh, Ben Gessling in the Star Tribune had a great line. He says he, he has ability to do both and is not guaranteed to do either. So I thought <laughs> that was yeah. a pretty good line. But the, and you know, who would what, hold what, for him? Linville exactly. The thing that occurred to me is what happens when uh, uh, if if you keep him to do both, which they won't, that he gets drilled and and you're you're you know you don't you're back up yeah. kickers after blah blah blah. You're out yeah. two positions and. You're uh, you're going for it on fourth down a lot is what you're doing. So, um, but you know, it, I I'm if he's the guy, great. Uh, it, it really does bring home the whole idea of what the hell happened last year with Daniel Carlson. I mean, yeah. I read somewhere he was the best kicker in the league after he got cut from us. Now, granted, the expectations were probably a little lower on that team that was just you know re- totally rebuilding, and he was a lot more relaxed or whatever. But, you know, they spend a fifth-round pick on him, and then now we spend another fifth-round pick yes. on the kicker again, or on, a, on a punter kicker now. It's like, I don't and know. The, I mean, I, mm, yeah. It, it, it's it's, it's kind of confusing. I, I like the fact that if you've got a problem and you're not happy with it, you go out and try to yeah. fix it. Yeah. But I don't know if putting more gasoline on a, on a smoldering fire is always the best idea. Either. I, I can't tell until you I, we see this kid – and see what he's got, and if he is, you know, what they're saying, kicking 60-yard field goals off a tee yeah. in practice. He claims 70. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's all good, but none of it means squat until you get into the uh, between the lines in, in games and when, when something's on the line, like Carlson had on the line last year, a huge yeah. game with Vikings against the Packers in, their, in Lambeau Field, and, you know, he, he missed three kicks, and you can't do that. So I, I don't know. It, it, it's... Uh, I love Zimmer, but it, uh, and I don't know if his his ideas about the kicking game and these specialists are are screwed up or not. But uh, they're not. Uh, it's just not normal operating procedure. Is totally. Is what, yeah. I mean, there, there's so much to unwrap with this move. I mean, I know yeah. that it's preseason and that he's not guaranteed to do anything. I will say my first reaction. And seeing the move on Twitter from Adam Schefter was that they were replacing Bailey. Like, I just thought that's what it was. Mainly because it was a fifth-round pick a year after, like you just said, they spent a fifth-round pick, which is a high pick for a kicker. Um, you know, and they, they spent a sixth-rounder on Blair Walsh. Granted, that was before <laughs> Zimmer, but that was Spielman. And I was one of the bigger people in calling for um, Mike Prefer to, to, to basically be fired and... <clears throat> last season, and I know that in in you uh, Walsh not, just Walsh should still be kicking for this team. But go ahead, yeah, you know he you know, should anyway. be or he could be. He should be. I mean, he's he's young and he had the leg and and he came in uh, somewhat touted, but obviously he wasn't the right choice. But yeah, you know, all all things aside, he should still be kicking with this team because he was rookie of the year or, uh, for special teams and he had a great season. And all he broke records. Great. Yes, it's it's for amazing. 50, Fifty yard kicks made as a as a rookie, and so, so I have to so wonder. It's worthwhile to bring that up because that has yeah. led us to where we are now. But totally. Um, you know, it would have been nice if they just picked up Robbie Gold and, and left it at that. Um, ooh, right. um, that was my uh, the sound of my confidence in the special teams of the Vikings hitting the floor. Um, yeah, you know, you look at it like it's a fifth round pick. And it, it, it shows that Zimmer is, is really at his wit's end with this situation. It's been something he's obviously had to deal with since he's got here. Um, the, the, the wide left 27-yard uh, field goal, the, the whole Walsh thing. 
And then you bring in a guy like Dan Bailey, who at the time was the second most accurate kicker in NFL history. He had a season. We took care of that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it, it makes you wonder if it's an, a problem of identifying talent or fostering that talent or both. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned fifth round pick, but you know, I, I when it when he first happens, it kind of you go a fifth round pick, damn. But then let's think about uh, Zimmer or Zimmer or Spielman's. Uh, track record, and he'll have about three or four fifth-round picks by the time he gets That's, done wheeling the deal before the draft. And so. I'm not one of those guys that, in, and I do, I mean, I know Diggs was a fifth-round pick, for example, and, and so he there's talent available. But I've always been someone, especially in this context, that, that believes more in a proven player than a draft pick, especially that late. Now, whether or not this guy is proven, he clearly isn't. I mean, he his, his sole season kicking field goals... In college, he was 10 for 16, um, but he was 42 or 43 for out of 44 or 42 out of 43 for extra points. So he's good at making extra points. Granted, that's in college and that's different. Um, yep. He was a, a first team all. How far uh, are those, Joe? How far are those extra points? In I college? think they're what they were for the NFL uh, before uh, they changed oh. it. Oh, before they changed it. Well, that, yeah. that's not that difficult, though. Yeah. So that's you got that. Um. But he was a first team, uh, whatever that conference is for Marshall. It's like um, a conference USA. He was first team for punting. Um, so it's been my feeling, and in, in there's been a lot of debate whether or not Bailey is just making excuses. I saw Sean Borman, uh, the managing editor of uh, Vikings Territory, talking about this on Twitter with a few people, that he, and I don't mean to, maybe this wasn't his take, maybe this is someone else's, but that he thought more it, that it was a Bailey issue, not a holding issue. That Bailey's been saying it's the holding issue. But that brings you back. Uh, speaking of levels to this, the last year when Prefer, uh, the article, the quote from Prefer that actually was the catalyst for me writing the article about firing him, which was apparently nobody ever taught Matt Weil how to hold. Um, and he was, I think, saying that in jest, but at the same time, he clearly was struggling with holding and he wasn't that good at it. So. It was something that that was maybe an oversight. So I think that by replacing him, and I know they're not entirely happy with with his output anyway, from the punting position, um, right. you get the punter and the holder taken care of at the same time in this guy. And then if for whatever reason Bailey doesn't work out, you have someone that can fill in. But yeah, that ten for sixteen is you know we've had Blair Walsh and Daniel Carlson. Both of them were almost clones of each other. Huge legs, struggled their senior year in the SEC. They thought, big leg, good at extra points. We can fix whatever's broken or why they struggled as a senior. That clearly did not work out. So, uh, well, yeah, this is a, uh, just yeah. lastly, it shows that they're all in, which I also agree with you. I like that about it. It's so, though you said, uh, you know, we get both, but you got to be care- uh, we have to be careful in uh, jack of all trades, master of none, you know, our. Yeah. Uh, um, and what you heard Zimmer, who who yesterday said that uh, uh, you know he, who who admitted to knowing about the trade, not telling the media, and then admitting that he did that and that he lied. So that's, that that tells you a one thing about Zimmer. He's always trying to tell the truth out there. If he you know he he kind of held back on that one, so I'll give him the credit. But he did say that uh, uh, that would be very difficult for him to do both. So that mm. tells me right there that he won't. They're going to look at him for one spot, whatever it is, and solidify this thing because uh, you have to have three uh, 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 specialists. And just because yeah. of injury, that maybe someone who can back up whatever, just how they happen in this league. I mean, the kickers and punters get hurt, amazingly enough. It it happens. Every time one of them tries to make a tackle, they get hurt. But, uh, <laughs> um, you, know, uh, you know, and the uh, odd man out here was uh, Kevin McDermott. Uh, yes. Which... Uh, you wanted to talk about and and you know i almost could have seen the writing on the wall there you and i kind of speculated on that last week as you know there's some uh there's some contract stuff there there's age and you know like zimmer said he, he didn't do anything wrong to get cut but they got a younger guy who's had more velocity on his snaps and you know um i'm all for zimmer and what he's saying is they got they got you know three weeks to figure this out but they had to get rid of him so they can start this crew working together exactly and if you, 
don't, you're just hosed when the season starts. I'm sorry. Then they don't have confidence because, you know, confidence, is, you know, it comes in, in working over and over and over and over again. You get muscle memory. You start building up confidence that when you are under the gun, you can make those plays happen. And if you don't give that an opportunity to, to take place in, in training camp, it, it, it'll show up in the first or second game, Daniel Carlson. Definitely, and they, they showed how much they like cutting, too, the replacement for McDermott. I mean, he, he was, I think, the only long snapper taken in the entire draft. Right. Um, and he has those uh, commitment issues with the Air Force that he's going to have to take care of, I'm assuming, but during not the, his the girlfriend. season. He doesn't have commitment issues with his girlfriend? Okay, good. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. 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 Uh, no, uh, it was topical, and it was right up my alley. Um yeah, I, I wasn't sure how that contract stuff was going to work. I assumed it was going to be during the off season that he had to whatever uh, go to whatever he has to do. Um, but if, they, if they're I, so, I was worried that maybe they would try to put him on the practice squad or something just because he wouldn't be available all the time. But it sounds like if they made this move, he's going to be because uh, you're exactly right. Those guys need to basically move in together at this point yeah. um, and kind of yeah. figure that out because this is. Just it's just a, an amount of stress that I don't need in my life. Gessling said it, it in, his, in his article. He talked about how uh, since 2012, the Vikings he he totaled up the number of picks they've spent on these specialists, including long snappers and and kickers and punters and stuff. And it's it's the most in the league, you know. Mm. Uh, and 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 that that's a lot of capital, you know. It, it probably isn't for the Vikings what we talked about. You know, it's always getting a, a bunch of picks. Zimmer, or I mean, Spielman always ends up with a bunch of picks in the draft, but he's also got to give up something to get those. So it's not like it's just the greatest thing in the world that he yeah. has 37 sixth round picks. But uh, but it, it, it is it's it's not concerning because you want to get the right guy, and and perhaps they had him last year, and and you know I, I don't know if you got to lay that at uh, Zimmer's feet for being so ticked off. But I, I, I suspect the way he is with uh, kickers and specialists that it probably never would have worked. You know, Carlson pr- didn't have his confidence. So, you know, what they you, you probably would have seen more kicks until he felt, you know, until he realized that the Vikings were an 8-7-1 and seven and one team and the pressure was off. But um, I don't know. I, I, I just don't – I'm not comfortable with – how, how it's all been handled. I like that they're trying, uh, but uh, you know, ultimately it has to be the uh, the proof's in the pudding. And so if if, if they get on the field and they got a kicker that makes kicks and Bailey goes reverts back to his old self and and uh, you know, uh, you you mentioned earlier about while I think I, I personally think he's going to be gone and and what's his name? Uh, how are we say his name? How do you say his the new guy's name? Vedvik. I'm just yeah. assuming that's how you say it. I think. I think he'd be the punter, and and you yeah. got off cut. So then, so then you know, then, then probably you have to look for a kicker in the couple of years. You know, if if unless that they can do it too. Who knows? This is just there's so many tentacles with this thing. You're right. It Jordan. really is. It's like an onion. But the more that we were talking about now, the more I realize that that's what's going to happen. Um, just because I don't think they would put this much stock into everything and then go with an unproven rookie for field goals. You know what I they mean? They did that. They did that last year. Yeah, and it didn't work. And so you have to look and say, okay, Bailey has proven that he can do this at a very, very high level. Let's acquiesce to his, maybe he's being a perfectionist, maybe he's making excuses. But as we know, the 95% of, of what goes on uh, in for kicker efficiency is between the ears. So if he doesn't like the hold situation, give him that option because clearly he's been able to do it for a long time. The only time he had a down year was his rookie year and the year that he was injured in Dallas. So um, maybe it's a move to make him feel better, and then on top of it, they can get a guy uh, that maybe punts more uh, directionally uh, the way that they like it. Whatever you say about the situation, even more so than it already has been, these three guys are going to be under the uh, the radar. I'm not under the radar. They are going to be the radar. It's going to be right on top of them. They're going to be under a microscope the entire. There's the cliche. Entire <laughs> season. They're going to be under the microscope. Everybody's going to look at every little thing they do, and nobody's going to be able to go to the refrigerator and get a beer nope. unless they got their DVR set on pause. So I uh, I mean I I am 35 years old. I only started smoking cigarettes when I was probably 30, 31, and it was mainly 
not to make excuses, but uh, Blair Walsh induced, I would go outside and smoke because <laughs> uh, I could not watch him kick field goals. And that has just continued. And when I'm on my deathbed in two years, I'm going to look at the Vikings and say, eh, makes sense. Um, the other big move this week, or over the weekend, rather, was a move uh, that we can talk about just briefly, but that I was excited about just because I followed him in college and always wanted the Vikings to grab him for a pe- practice squad role, and that was uh, the Nate Wozniak pickup. Big pi- Ten pick warning. Up. That's you right. Need a, you need a sounder for every time before you talk about a Big Ten guy. I should I should put that on the sound bar. Like you can tune out for the next X amount of minutes because here comes my propaganda. Uh, but he's an exciting pickup. I mean, he's what third string tackle, and they brought him on because they have injuries at the position. Uh, Brian O'Neill didn't play Friday night, uh, and Rashad Hill, I think, uh, is one of the biggest anti-Rashad Hill guys probably in the industry, uh, the Vikings media industry. I think he, he did okay, but they're pretty thin at uh, the tackle positions beyond Elfline and O'Neill, so they brought this guy in. They cut, uh, what's his face, Catalina. Um, uh, but, this you know, he, he played tight end mainly at the U. He's 6'10". He uh, was on the practice squad for the Saints, uh, and I think Zimmer talked about him liking his physicality, liking, you know, he's like Brian O'Neill, a converted tight end. Um, What is it with that? That's like the third one, isn't it? Yeah, I think they want more for, like, the zone blocking. They want guys who are able to move. Exactly, and and he can do that. Now he he just needs to put on weight. Uh, Zimmer said he's over 300 pounds now, so... He's happy, but that he can do everything that they want him to do. So hopefully that we won't have to see him, but I thought it was just another example of the team tinkering yeah, we, with things. Yeah, we feel, we feel good about how the guard situation lately, and, and now suddenly, you know, if, if uh, I don't know what O'Neal's got, if it's... It's, if it's, an it's, arm, it's an arm injury, and they said that they don't expect him to miss significant time like he'll be ready for the, the opener but we've heard that all off season for people that we still haven't seen so so now we got to worry about the tackles so that's yeah and that's i mean especially if uh something were to to happen to riley reef they oof. that's the main uh point of concern but uh we'll see hopefully uh they got their they, they got uh what's his name in in the uh the head of uh the medical staff that wins all those awards, Sugarman is his name. Yeah, right? Eric um, Sugar. Yeah. yeah, he's uh, he's earning his money right now. That's for sure. Grant, I mean, I'm, but everyone gets it gets injured during camp. I think we've been relatively lucky. Uh, but let's get into the Saints game a little bit. Um, we can start with that first drive because we touched on it. I I do think well, there's two things there too. Delvin Cook didn't play. Uh, I know that there was some talk about the the turf at the Superdome was new and they needed to break it in a little bit. And I think Zimmer mentioned that he just didn't want to risk it with Cook. Um, is that your understanding of why he didn't play? Was just mainly the turf issue? I, I you know, to be honest, I don't know. I was uh, uh, ensconced in uh, moving my mom and independent living all weekend, and I just got down, sat down in time to watch the game, and I was a little surprised, but not really. I I, I figured. You know, with his 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 injury history, they're just being cautious, and you know whether it's the turf or whatever it is, they they don't they you know they're going to be counting on him a lot this year with uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Kubiak's offense. He's going to want to run the ball. Zimmer's going to want to want to run the ball. So you know, um, and this way they got to, we we got to see the the passing game come out and play. And I, and I you know I have been really bullish on. Uh, on uh, Alexander McAllister ever since I saw him on OTA, since I've been saying, oh, uh, get all you know, that. Madison, I, I, you mean? Oh, what, what did I say? Madison. McAllister. Yeah. Mad- uh, and Madison. And I, uh, so I was excited to, I, I, I had no problem with him, give, him getting all the, the reps for the first team, second team, and for how long we had him in there. And, Me either. Um, so that, that, that was great. And I think he's going to be good. Um, I, I think they just wanted, you know, make sure that, uh, they don't unduly, re- you know. Th- this is the first time with a new line. Why, why, why uh, put yourself? I don't know. Hey, I don't. I, I'm not sure what to say to that joke because I don't know the reason for it. But I'm fine with what they did. We're used to them sitting down their star running backs, aren't we? Around here, totally. And it makes sense. And I know that they, 
they did mention on on TV about like the paint job and everything on the field that it was it just needed a few games played on it and considering that both Cook's injuries were non-contact on turf at home, um, Good point. similar turf in a brand new stadium. I think they said, "Why take that risk?" So I have absolutely no problem with it. That what, having, what, what, before you go, what does that? What do you feel like when you're uh, Alexander Madison? All of a sudden, they say, "Yeah, we don't want to." You know, the turf's really rotten. We don't want to put Cook <laughs> yeah. out there, but but. Uh, Al, go on in there and get us yeah. some yards, will you? We'll ya? give you, uh, what, 10 touches? He had nine carries. He had the catch for the <laughs> touchdown. You know, the, I was excited to see it. I think he only had like a 3.3 yard per carry average. I think the line did better as the game went on. It was obviously different people against a, a different uh, defense. Um, but you had guys like Boone and Abdullah who, outside of that fumble, both looked really good. Uh, since I just touched on it, we can probably just talk about that really quickly. That fumble! Oh, I oh, couldn't believe it. It I mean, killed he, he me, was, too. He was having a great game. He looked really good. He looked so quick and so fast. And I just said, dude, you can't do that. Nobody touched you. Yeah, you switched it was, the ball he, in your hands. Ooh. Yep. It's totally like... Yeah. So I said something on Twitter after the big run. Like, this is why I love Abdullah, and I bring him up almost on every show for some reason. Um, but it, it shows wh- why he was available and why he was so cheap. I mean, he's he's got this razzle-dazzle that Boone doesn't have. I mean, Boone's run was gorgeous. He cut back and, and showed some speed, but Abdullah has game-breaking speed. But he just does these things that are just... Yeah. It, yeah, you can't have that in a running back, and you can't have that in a return man either. You know, totally. Totally. So that that was a little concerning, but hopefully it's a. It must have been the field, the paint on the field. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Um, something that that Sean Borman uh, since we're talking about the the rush game, Cousins had that one rush for ten yards. He talked about it a little bit in the article that I wrote, um, but uh, Sean did a really good piece titled Kirk Cousins the Scrambler question mark, and it was basically uh, this. Um, during training camp, there was an emphasis on, on getting him to, to move more, to be, I think the quote was something more like uh, aware of opportunities in the pocket or something like that. Mm. And the basically the way it was, that Sean explained it, which is taken from sound bites from the coaches, was that when Diggs and Thielen are covered, uh, double covered, usually that means that there's nobody covering Cousins because he's got a reputation as being a statuesque guy. And so he can usually pick up 10, 15, 20 yards. Um, Cousins talked about the play specifically and said, you know, it works best when it's man-to-man. And uh, that the specific play on, on the first drive was, I think they had a blitzing linebacker who got into the backfield, but he was behind Cousins, so Cousins identified it and stepped up. So it's something they've been working on. It's something that worked in that instance. Um, I well, that's nice, nice to see. At least get yeah. the threat of it out there because, you know, totally. change that reputation, reputation you just described. If you can at least make them think, one, you know, twice that he can move, move and can run and get some yards when things break down, then then you got to keep an eye on him. So yeah, it just adds more wrinkles to it. The first drive, if you count the pass to Diggs, he completed a pass to five different people. I counted. Nice. Um, so it was really four, but uh, so that would have been five for five to five different people. Maybe four, now I'm thinking about because I know he had two passes to Rudy, but either way he was spreading the ball around. Madison got one, Diggs got one that was called back, uh, Rudolph had two, um, Madison had one, and Thielen had one. That is five. So um, I think that, like you said, adding that wrinkle to it and then seeing what they're doing in terms of tight end plays, like there was Rudy's, uh, the passes to Rudolph, he had ample yard after catchability like room which is something yeah really a lot of room to. yep absolutely. um and maybe that's a thing where the teams don't really fear that from him or maybe that's how they were lining him up um <clears throat> and i did see a play uh, something that you touched on last week which was having when the when B, when bb's on the field also having like uh two tight ends and having them kind of coexist together there was a, a pass play i think to to rudolph that was that I think they weren't showing a ton of stuff obviously it's the first uh, preseason game but there was a lot of different formations mm-hmm. and stuff like that uh, Zimmer talked about the run game too just to put a, a bow on the run game situation he talked about Barry Switzer uh, when he worked under him in Dallas and and how Switzer used to run the wishbone in college and the way he described it was 
you know, you might get two yards, three yards, negative three yards, but every five or six plays you get 13, 14, 15 yards, and I think that's their philosophy this year um, in, in multiple ways, just in, in terms of committing to the run game, but also having – we saw a few uh, two running back uh, – play like sets out there that we, we don't usually see or we didn't see last season anyway um at least in in terms of having two guys and you don't really know who's going to get the ball as opposed to just having a fullback block so there was just a lot of stuff where it looked like a happy marriage with Kubiak and Stefanski that I was happy with and it seemed like with no delay of games or anything like that that they were communicating well which is good just because there's obviously some some new people and and a lot of cooks in that kitchen I guess right. is the best way to put it all, all the cooks except Alvin. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, I, and I what I like to see, and I saw a couple times was the, the play action. I don't know if yes. you mentioned that, but uh, I mentioned I, everything I, else but that. I stepped well, on every take possible. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that the touchdown play? Was that a touch? Wasn't that play action or not? I, Maybe, it was, but it was it was it was so wide open. They, they I think they sucked the linebacker in somehow, and and and. Uh, uh, Madison just sprinted out to the right and was wide open for that little. Oh flap. yeah, the touchdown play. I was thinking of. Sorry, I was thinking of the yeah. um, the the Thielen play that was initially called touchdown. Oh, um, I I saw that with with some of the with with Mannion and and some of the other guys too. And uh, I just I, I we saw it all spring, and I think that you know it's something that they've always talked about ever since uh, uh, Cousins got here is to do that. So hopefully maybe that's going to be a a bigger bigger deal because I, I saw them in the OTA sucking in the Vikings defense time and time again with this play action fake and it was like yeah. wow you know I mean it you know if you've got good running backs you know you can do that and you can freeze these guys for a second that's all it takes for someone to sprint out and you can get a five yard gain you know if and if, if that's cousin specialty and isn't uh, that his his thing like he's known as one of the most uh, elite play action guys yeah, and if uh, Kubiak likes to do it, you know, maybe there's going to be a lot of it in there. But <clears throat> that's the other thing, too. You said they're not showing everything. But, you know, it's it's bound to be different than what we've seen because it's Kubiak and Stefanski, you know, two new yeah, offensive yeah. coordinators. So it was a lot to watch. It, 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 it'll be more interesting to see what they take from that and, and bring to, to this next game against Seattle. You know, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll do some – Probably more vanilla stuff, and but uh, uh, you know, just to see the kind of framework that it has. Will we see play action? Will we see some of these other things you talked about? And, uh, and that'll be worth watching next this weekend. And if it works and it's vanilla, why? That's you know, it's win-win. You know, it's it's very encouraging. Uh, just one last thing about the first drive. I I was doing a lot of live tweeting and stuff, and we had a live chat going, and some people were kind of. They they it, it was a more amazing catch than throw. Um, but I do want to. Oh God, yes. It's you incredible. know, it, it reminded me of the beginning of last year. It, it felt exactly the same as that touchdown that was just like a hair uh, beyond that defender, uh, and Thielen was falling down backwards into the end zone. Mm-hmm. It was kind of similar to that one. I forget against who. Packers. Um, Packers. Yeah. So it was in defense of the throw. Another. I sh- this is where the Big Ten horn would would sound. Uh, he threw it where no one else could get it, but Thielen, which was good. Um, I, I just thought it was it was a beautiful play. Uh, if it was five years ago, that would have been a touchdown. Uh, right, right. You know, I thought they would never reviewed it for I sure. Thought, yeah, I thought it looked like one, but it was fine. I kind of like getting mad Madison Indian in zone and, and uh, uh, getting them you know, that I, first one. Yeah, we had another, we had another guy with his first touchdown. That the the defensive Easy? play. Yeah. Oh. For the yeah. Defense. Yeah. That was uh, Nate uh, Metters? Correct. Yeah, and I he, thought that was an autocorrect thing when I first saw his name a couple weeks ago. Like, <laughs> Meadows or is it Metters? But that was – yeah, I felt good for him as a guy who, who – who, well, who knows what, what's going on with the corners, whether or not he'll make the, the team. But um, Right. Good it, was, it was uh, uh, fun for the defense, which didn't have a stellar night. No. Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater, Bridgewater kind of uh, played well and look, looked really good against him. I'd said this when we were talking. Well, I was going to say, what was the? What did you say in the chat? Oh, I, I said I was really torn because mm-hmm. uh, um, I, I love for him to see him doing well and to see him back out there. But I said, you know, and I just said, but dot 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 dot, you know, because there's I'm I was always a Teddy Bobo and I wanted him to 
to be here as long as it worked out well for him. And, and it, it's a, he had, he's gone prematurely, and good for him that he's back up and maybe potentially uh, getting himself a starting position somewhere with another team, but too bad it's not us, you know. So If the preseason ended right now and somebody uh, went down, I, I like we talked we touched on this last week. I asked you that question. I strongly believe that um, they would offer the Saints something on a Bradford level <clears throat> in terms of a trade to get Bridgewater. He looked really really good. The Vikings defense, you know, they were without their their starting uh, defensive tackles, um, so they were struggling against the run. They were doing the bend don't break sort of thing, giving up a lot of. Uh, yardage between the 20s and then hunkering down and only allowing field goals or whatever but he was making throws that he didn't consistently make here um but i think he was starting to yes that's true and we talked we talked about that last week how i finally caved in and was like all right teddy's the franchise and then literally what three hours later he was his (laughs) leg fell off but he was making throws to to receivers in stride like in the slot yep uh, he was making throws down the field. He had a couple of nice ones down the field, uh, too. His final stats were, um, I have it written down somewhere. He was, he had like a, man, do I have a lot? I have like the notes of a crazy person. Um, Teddy's return, 14 and 19, 134 yards, a 7.1 yard uh, yard per throw average, one touchdown, no interceptions, 110 nice. point, 110.4 rating. It was a That's good night for great. for all the quarterbacks, but yeah, it was. Um, he looked good. He took the the biggest thing for me was he took a couple uh, big hits too, and, and he, one right square in the knees. I don't know who it was. was that Jalen but, Holmes. Oh my god! Ohio goodness. State. I just cringed when that happened. I go, and it, was, it felt late the too. Memo. Yeah, <laughs> if that was Breeze, there would have been uh, multiple flags. Um, but yeah, good for Teddy. Um, I have a feeling he might end up on a different team this season if, if somebody goes down with the injury. Um, but yeah, I mean, oof. if he ends up starting somewhere and doing well, can you imagine? We just launched, and this is a shameless plug, but we just launched our message board. And if you're listening to the show, I highly suggest you check it out. We're going to be uh, advertising it heavily starting tomorrow. And it, it's kind of like a message board meets a chat room meets like social media so there's like a it's almost like twitter built into the site and instagram like it's fully functional so you can see all the activity from all the different people you can go into the chat room during games and chat live then you can go into the message board and and share photos or videos from uh what you're doing or just comment on articles that we've written it's it's really cool but i have a feeling that if regardless of what cousins does nothing could rip the vikings fan base in half more than teddy coming back and succeeding. <laughs> I mean, it, that would just be, just on the level of people doing that with with Case Keenum, it just, oh my god. Ugh. Um, uh, that, that's something to look forward to, that that message board. I'm, I'm excited for it. Cause, uh, it it's, it's great fun, you know, to sit back here and, and write stories and put them up there and, and see what happens, but to throw them up there and then have people just go back and forth and discuss yeah. them, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So I, I'm hoping, hoping that we can really make that a thing here at at, uh, at the network this year and, and really get the, the, the chat rooms going and get some people energized and talking about it because I, I think it'll be fun. The writers are all going to be on it and, and chit-chatting back and forth, and, and you can you can rip them right to their keyboard. So just, <laughs> totally. And, and, and Philosophically, and I'll leave it at this, but I really wanted to make something that – one of the main reasons that I left Reddit for this network to start it was that a lot of the time – People, if you had a really in-depth football argument, it would turn into a personal uh, crap-talking battle, like personal things, uh, you know, and I don't want that on the site. Like, I, I want it to be, like, a safe haven for people to have really in-depth conversations about analytics or just plays, you know. We have the okay from the team to do a lot of play breakdowns both on in our, in our video studio and just on the site as, as a whole. So I'm really hoping that we have, like, a more... I'm not saying positive, but I, we're just gonna have zero tolerance for any like personal bashing because it, it, we all are there for the same reason, which is we love the Vikings, and there's no reason for us to hate each other uh, more so. I mean, the Vikings bring enough sadness as it is; we don't need to make it any worse. Um, and when I say rip the writers, I mean everybody except me because I have really thin skin, so don't, don't <laughs> do it, ripping me. Uh, 
the wide receiver. Uh, let's talk about the wide receiver group. How they did uh, in, on Friday night. Um, the standout for me, surprisingly, I fully expected to see BB just light things up, but. Someone that threw their hat in the ring and complicated matters a little bit more was uh, Ola B.C. Johnson, who looked a lot bigger mm-hmm. to me than the, his listed six foot. I don't know if that's just because he had that jump ball uh, before his touchdown that, that he looked really right. good on. Yep. But, you know, both the passes were, weren't really easy catches for him. He had to turn around for the first one, jump up, and get it. The second one uh, was kind of a contested uh, fall down backwards thing in the end zone. He had 35 yards and a TD. Uh, he also uh, returned one uh, kickoff for 27 yards, which uh, uh, Badette had two for 59, uh, a long of 35, and a 29.5 average. And then Abdullah had two for 43 with a, a long of 22. Uh, he's looking like he's really fighting for a spot, which I didn't expect. I, I expected more Dylan Mitchell to do that just based on his reputation of being a quarterback-friendly guy. Um, but, yeah, he, he really looked good. Well, I saw it, you know, you mentioned BB, and I, I think that just, you know, speaks volumes on what they think of him. You know, they're considering him a starter. I think he's up on, he's tops mm-hmm. up there on the on the uh, uh, depth chart. More and so than he, Jordan Taylor, who's listed right next to him or after exactly. him, on, and he was out there in the fourth quarter. So it's also, also the other thing is they know what they got in BB. They know who he is. You know, he was there last year. Again, he's only a sophomore, you know, per se. But he, he uh, uh, Taylor, they don't. You know, while while Kubiak knows what he has in Taylor, uh, Zimmer doesn't. So they want to see him in action so he can evaluate him himself. And, you know, they're going to try out guys that they haven't seen before. That's what this is all about. You, you get your starters out there for that one series, and then you start getting others in there and, and see how they they look against, you know, you know uh, alongside, you know, second stringers and uh, fighting the same across the line. So, I you know, I, I'm not surprised by that. And it just really, to me, Solidifies the fact that uh, BB's going to be the guy, maybe both yeah. as a punt returner and as a third, third wide out. That's- yeah, there wasn't a lot of drama in the punt return uh, department. There was one punt, and I can't remember if he fair caught it or not. I feel like there was more than one punt, but the box score said there was one. I, I, maybe I'm uh, conflating kick returns, but I remember at one point uh, in the live chat, someone saying, "Why didn't he fair catch that?" And I think it was about. Uh, BB. I think he just caught something in traffic. Um, right, he did. He, he came, raced it up, and caught it right in traffic. And I think it would have been, uh, he might, he, he should have fair caught it. I agree with you. I remember that one. Yeah, uh, but I this is to the last thing about uh, BC Johnson. I yeah, he was doing things I fully expect expected Taylor to do. I guess because if you have BB, we talked about this last week. We talked about this a lot. You have a guy who is 5'9", but is a uh, really quick, really great moves, great route runner. So they might want a guy in the uh, end zone who can do the jump ball thing, and, and that seems to be what uh, B.C. Johnson was doing. And Whether or not they can sneak him onto the practice squad, if that's what they want to do, remains to be seen. But, yeah, if he keeps this up, ooh, it's going to be – there's going to be a lot of good guys. Uh, that's why it would well, be nice to have a kicker and a puncher that does everything because then you have that extra <laughs> roster spot, but it's not the 80s anymore. That's why uh, Zimmer keeps ripping the wide receivers so that, that they'll think, okay, they're no good, and then they can sneak yeah. them through. Ooh. But I, you put on your uh, uh, agenda here to me that is this the end of Treadwell, and I think oh, I yeah. think we, we figure that it is because um, I heard the other day a quote from him saying that someone had asked him about the media, and he yeah. says media is just a distra- I don't listen to it. Well, that's another of those writing on the wall statements. You know, He's starting to feel the pressure, and, and the, when the media starts coming in, Part being part of your story and and how people are talking about you, then then you know it doesn't it doesn't bode well going forward because I don't even know if he's going to keep getting the opportunity to show what he can do. They know what he, they know what they he, they have in him, but uh, they've got to look at all these other guys. And so his opportunity to shine may have already come and gone with his team. Yeah, he's had a lot of opportunity too. And yep. I've had people tell me, and it drives me a little crazy. That, you know, well, it's not fair because he's behind the two best guys and he hasn't had a shot. Well, he, he's had less opportunities than perhaps another first-round pick would get, but he's had opportunities. And yep. you got you got to make do with what you got, you know, and right. if, you, if you can't consistently catch the ball. I mean, you could see missed opportunities, I think, drive Zimmer wild just from a mental standpoint. Like, I think... He and I, uh, not to like link myself to this at all, but like I, I, you can see like when Abdullah fumbled that ball, it's a preseason game, but he looked pissed. Like you could just tell that stuff bothers him. 
and I, I can relate to that a little bit, <clears throat> despite all evidence to the contrary. So uh, I just don't you think know, they Joe, have they, a stomach for it. Yeah, they they all you also win these jobs in practice. I remember a long time ago, I, I went to St. John's University, and there was a Tim Schmitz was the running back my freshman year. This dates me, and they won the national championship, and he was something else. And I and, went to St. John's. Yes, I did. I actually, graduated. You know, that's even more hey, shocking. Hey, <laughs> I didn't know you graduated. Uh, <laughs> and Schmitz went out to. Uh, he started. You know, uh, uh, let's see. He started first with Baltimore. No, no, no. Or was it the Vikings? He, he got uh, Zimmer. Uh, you know, Bud Grant's kid, Mike Grant, played with Tim Schmitz on that national championship team, and so they, I think they brought they brought him in. Uh, to have a tryout with the uh, with the uh, of Vikings, and uh, I remember running into Schmitz down in Mankato and talking to him, and he was saying he was comp- he had spent some time with trying out with uh, uh, Baltimore, and he was saying how much more of a class organization the Vikings were than Baltimore at the time. But that's beside the point. Anyway, Schmitz had all these great plays in the preseason. You know, he was making he was scoring touchdowns, he was making plays, he was doing everything, but he got cut. And Grant said later, you know, you've got, you know, you can't just show up on on Sunday and, and you know make those plays, even though that's what your butter is bread is buttered. But yep. he says he got he wasn't as good a practice player as he was uh, in the games, and maybe that's because uh, 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 <laughs> the coach up at St. John's never really practiced that much. You know? <laughs> that could be, you know, and you have that, and and I hate, I God, I'm I'm such a stereotype of myself right now, but. Um, I think there's a little bit of that when you're a, a stud like that your entire life yep. and you get to the NFL and you haven't had to really try because you're just that good. Um, sometimes it's a rude awakening and some people just can't do it. You know, they don't want to. Um, there's yeah. a great gotta, Muhammad Ali quote he... where he says he hated training. Like it was, he hated it more than anything, but he knew that's what he had to do. And I don't think... I just think people hate that stuff, but the good people do it. Didn't hate it more than Alan Iverson, but, uh, you know, practice. But, uh, <laughs> um, I, I want to say John Gagler is the name I couldn't come up with. He he, he was notorious for up at St. John's for, you know, having all these guys on his team, 100, you know, they dress everybody, but they, you know, their practices were, you know, they didn't do any hitting in practice. You know, that's just what's his philosophy through all those years. And, Which and, is, you know, you don't especially know, for I, the era, just, is weird. Exactly. It really was. And maybe that catches up with a guy. But Schmitz was really good. Great guy. Wonderful guy. I always wanted, was hoping that he'd make it. And I thought he would after what I seen him. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is you, you, tread well. You know, you might not get an opportunity in the game. So you better make your plays in practice. You better show him what you're going to do. And who knows if he's done that or not. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like he was, like early, I know you you covered like how much time he spent on the jugs machine after practice and everything, but maybe that's not, you know, it's almost like a, uh, it's different, but it's similar to uh, Cordell Patterson when Zimmer wanted him to hook up with Michael Irvin, which you had to think for Zimmer to reach out to somebody like that and ask that of a hall of famer. It's a big ask. And it, it, yep. for, for Zimmer to do that personally is, is such a big deal. And for him to turn that down to do something he didn't need to do, which is run, in the sand because he wanted to get faster when he was already fast. It's that kind of stuff that just, yeah, you're completely right. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've talked. I mean, I'm hoping this is the last time that that'll be a topic, but it seems like the end of Treadwell is, is every week. Um, another the battle uh, I wanted to touch on quickly was the, the QB battle. And, and one of our writers for Purple PTSD, uh, Deshaun Vaughn, he wrote a, an article that should be live now. Um, Actually, it is live. I helped edit it. He basically said that nobody really... There was no movement there because everyone played relatively well. I thought Manny, and, you know, despite... He was only 7 for 13 um, starting out versus Sloter's 6 for 7. Um, and I think Browning was out there pretty much garbage time. He had three uh, pass attempts. But <sighs> Manny looked good to me. I mean, especially early. He was moving the ball... Um, he did have a couple balls, I think, that sailed on him. He had one to Irv Smith Jr. and another one to a running back. Both seemed to be screen plays where um, he kind of threw it too high, and, and that's an issue, especially um, when those balls can get picked off easily. But, yeah, Sloter looked good. I mean, he was mobile. He looked better than I expected. Yep, he looked better than I expected him to be. Uh, yeah. For what it was worth. Totally. Maybe my expectations were, were low, but uh, my, that's, I thought... That's, 
Mm, I was wondering that myself, you know, because I've been kind of writing him off, I guess. Yeah. You know, this we've talked about uh, him holding the clipboard a lot, and, and you've made the point of, well, they know what they got in him. Maybe they, they, they want to see what they got in these other guys. And that very well uh, may be the case, but he seemed to be playing for his life, and he looked good. Right. Six or seven. Yeah. 143.2 rating. Um, Mannion had a 105.3 rating. So, Oof. you know, I, I the one thing that that struck me, and it's it's just impressionistic. It's not you know the stats and deep dive or anything, but uh, the 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 quickness and uh, precision and crispness of that first drive and Cousins and how confident he looked and how I thought he he was really dealing out there. It. There was a drop off there to Mannion and certainly to the other guys. I mean, you can see the difference between the starter and the backups, and that it it scares me a little bit. We can't let that dude get get hurt this year no. because uh, you know not that not that I'm not that's not to slight Mannion or Slaughter or anybody, but it uh, you know Cousins is a, is a is a professional starter in this league. There's no two ways about it, and and I really felt felt that from him. It, it, he almost looked like he started out last year, and was, in, in particular the, the Packers and the, the Rams game. He looked great. You know, he looked like he was, you know, uh, slinging passes and knew what, how, where everything was going. It wasn't until later in the year when he was, uh, he, he, he wasn't playing as well. And uh, yeah. uh, I, I was happy to see it. I, I hope they let him play a little bit more against Seattle so that we can see a little bit of more of that. They just get their timing down and keep keep going, you know, taking things to the next level. But, uh, you know, it uh, there, there's a there's a drop off there, so yeah, maybe maybe they go out and get Teddy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be full circle? Um, uh, it would be a contractual nightmare too, because of course you can. You know, yeah. Cousins gets hurt, then you don't know what to do with his third year, and whether or not you should draft somebody. You know, if he has a really down year, they can at least draft someone behind him. Uh, for you know, because a lot of these guys they'll be older, but they're still the, the majority of the core players are signed through 2023. So there's an argument that there's two windows of opportunity. Um, then you have Zimmer and Spielman's contracts being up at the end of 2022, so 2020 TOO uh, as well. I guess I should have said so. Yeah, that would just not be good on on all fronts. Um, you mentioned the Seahawks game, and I just wanted to kind of finish on that. If there were, like we've touched on a lot of this, but like what what do you want to see more of to feel more confident about this team, I guess? I mean, I personally would like to see some um, some better uh, output from the run game starting out. Uh, uh, Delvin Cook, obviously, is huge. I want to see how he looks, um, what he does behind this line. I want, to do, I want to focus a little bit more on the line itself. I would love to see Brian O'Neill play uh, because these guys are young. They need time together. O'Neal's playing next to somebody who it's going to be Klein, but it looks like Samia was taking second team reps this week or over the uh, so far this week, which he was with the third team before that. So uh, yeah, really, I mean, I wish O'Neal was playing, but I, I just want to see more output from the run game, namely from from Dalvin Cook. Yep, I, I would agree with that. Um, I, I would like to see uh, the first team get two or three series so they're out there and they're, they're grinding a little bit because you know it's very well possible that the Saints defense didn't care and they just cruised down there but I only want to see those series if they're playing against first team defense on the other side of the ball I don't I don't yeah. need to see Cousins and those guys against you know backups so that, that that would be my first thing I'd want I'd want to see a little bit more uh out of the Vikings defense yeah. you know and just you know now granted they bend and didn't break and that was fine you know while while the uh, majority of the first and second teams were out there, so you know I, I can't fault them too much. But I, you know, I want to see them. They, they, you know, Teddy Bridgewater played well against him, and he, yeah. he I, want, I don't want to say picked him apart, but he, he made some nice passes on him and, and found a lot of open receivers. So I'd like to see him tighten that up a little bit. And I really want to watch the kicking game. Ah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I was going to say next. I don't want. Like, I want to see efficiency from the offense and and more uh, touchdowns than field goals. But I want to see like multiple field goals. Yeah, that would be good. And I uh, see a good uh, chance for uh, for both punters. Now, while apparently has cut his finger in the game, had stitches in it, so he might not even play. We're gonna probably gonna see a a lot of Kari. Did you say Ka- his name? I think so, Kari Vedvik. 
I should okay. know. I think I have Norwegian blood in me, but wow, fighting yeah, well. my Swedish blood. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. I want to see that. I want to see like we talked about in the beginning of the show, the unit. Uh, I want to see Austin Cutting, whoever the holder is going to be. I want to see them take a Uber together from the stadium home, all three of them. Um, I also, I, I this is a good, I, this is probably the biggest tweet I've ever put out there. It got like 200 likes or hearts or whatever. And we can end the show with this because I'm going to put it on the message board. And I think a new tradition is outside of every year we do um, game predictions, scores, and then we, we kind of keep track during the season. And I always get my ass kicked. Um, but this year is my year. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to put out a lingering question for people that they can answer on, on the message board. And the topic that I put out in my tweet was essentially that I think uh, Trey Waynes is the most underrated player on the Vikings and slash most disrespected player. Uh, I, I think God. people really uh, don't realize how good he is. He had, to, he had a pass breakup in, in the, early in the game that was the impetus for that tweet. He also went to Michigan State, uh, if you're not familiar. That's a school in the Big Ten. Um, but I, I'll give a story about where a lot of this comes from. I remember the first year that I had a press pass uh, to training camp, which was the last year in Mankato. And I was on the sidelines for, like, the weekend. They let blog people go. And the writers that I was standing with, and I won't name names or websites, but it wasn't traditional media people, were... Was it me? No, you weren't there. <laughs> And I was really upset about that because everybody was super rude to me, and I was really upset about it. I don't know if you remember that, but like, yeah, yep. every every person I talked to would just like look at me and walk away, and I was like, "What is wrong? Do I smell bad? Like, what is going on?" Um, but all the writers were like openly heckling Trey Waynes, uh, booing him and laughing, and it was like for things that weren't really even his fault. It was like on the other side of the field. I think people just have this negative connotation from like the the first year second year with all those penalties and everything so i uh, want might, our, our listeners be, to comment wait, on that but wait, i wait, i don't wait, think wait. he gets the respect he deserves okay i was i was gonna say uh it might be further than that uh trey waynes has always been a difficult person to talk to in the in the locker room mm. he he has from the right out of the gate he let he let us know. I mean, you can tell he hated it. He didn't want to. He wasn't he wasn't comfortable. He was never a jerk, never an ass. He was just um, gave the kind of answers that you knew uh, he was not engendering you to ask anymore because he just said, "Okay, this guy is really not liking this. Let's see what I need to get and get out of here as soon as possible." And he, he avoids it whenever possible. So it's just not his thing. He's not like I say. He's not a jerk, and maybe maybe that could have been some of it behind it. They were you know yeah. chastising because we, usually when rookies come in, they've got to learn the ropes. And they've got to uh, 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 you know make nice with the media, and it, it's going to help them down the down the way. And I don't think he's ever uh, really gotten much better. I saw Mark Craig had an article on him a, a few weeks ago, and I meant to ask him. Uh, uh, how he got it, how how Trey was, because he's notoriously reticent when it comes to talking to the media. So maybe that was part of it. I don't know, but uh, um, he had his he had his difficulties early on on the field. He would get burned in big spots, but that's that's the job of a corner. So he's going to get the praise, but he's going to get ridiculed. So I I wouldn't go so far as to say uh, he's the most underrated, but I, you know he's got to be top five, and I would have to go really take a look at it to see Cousins. who else. Who else is is? Oh God! Well, if if they play there's in a, the Big Ten, there's a connection. Here. There's a connection there. I guess Wozniak is number three, huh? Yeah, Jalen Holmes, <laughs> Ohio State. Uh, who else can I think of? Oh my God! Oh uh, God, I'm oh. so transparent. But anyway, if you agree or disagree with me, check out the message board. That'll be on there. Uh, you can actually register really quickly with. Um, it seriously takes like a second. If you have a Facebook or a Twitter account, you just press a button and you have an account. Uh, so check that out. There's going to be articles explaining how it works because it, it's – my only concern is that it is really in, not complicated to use, but there's just so many features that I want to make sure people are aware of everything because it could really become uh, hopefully like an, uh, a really great community because um, we have great followers. You know, Our show has been doing really well. I, I really appreciate everyone that supports us, and we're just looking to do more community-based stuff because that um, – has always been the goal. We just wanted to make sure that we had something different to offer. Because um, in the past, I've had people ask me, like, well, why would I want to join your message board versus Reddit or Twitter? So 
I think people will like the features. I think they'll like the um, ambiance, I guess. Like, it's just going to be a little bit more... Like, if you're looking to have in-depth conversations with writers and people with access and, and people that quote-unquote do this for a living and, and you want to kind of escape some of the negativity of Vikings Twitter or Vikings Reddit, that's what we're going for. We have... I'll be moderating it. We have a couple other guys that are moderators. We're just going to make sure that people know, like, have a good time. You can get passionate, but just keep it about football, and we'll all have a good time. Um, ah, yeah, but with that, this has been uh, Morning Joe's. Thanks to everybody, again, who's been listening. The show's been growing every week. It's it's really um, been awesome uh, this off season. And uh, we will be back early next week to discuss the Seahawks game. Keep an eye on the message board and on the site. We'll be doing another live chat on a Sunday. It'll be a Sunday night game, so that'll be fun. And um, uh, check out TicketClub.com. Uh, you'll see the banner on the website. If you click on that and, and use the discount code SCOLDPTSD, you'll get a free one-year premium membership on TicketClub.com. That's like a $50 value for free. And then you can buy tickets uh, with no fees. One of our writers bought six tickets to the Vikings-Giants game in New York, and he saved $200 on that one purchase. So that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. I just My family just bought like 15 tickets to the Raiders game, and they saved like $600. Um, what yeah, a deal. I, I know. It's pretty cool. I'm super excited about it. And I'm super glad that they decided to partner with us for the season. So... Uh, this has been Morning Joe's. We will catch you guys next week. And Skull, trademark. <laughs>